for all the effort. Phase one of cellular respiration, namely glycolysis, generates just two molecules of ATP. And in phase two, the Krebs cycle, only two additional ATP molecules. Remember though, much of the energy from glucose has been transferred to the carrier molecules, NADH and FADH2. It's in the final phase, called oxidative phosphorylation, where the energy carriers pay off in numerous ATP molecules. Oxidative phosphorylation occurs within the cell mitochondria, deep inside the cristae of the inner membrane. Embedded within the membrane are countless structures known as electron transport chains. Here within each chain, the energy carriers are used to synthesize ATP. An electron transport chain consists of four adjacent complexes. Locked in place in the inner membrane. The chain functions by removing energy from electrons as they move in pairs down an energy gradient. The energy is transferred in part to the space between the mitochondrial membranes, the intermembrane space. Oxidative phosphorylation begins as NADH from the Krebs cycle donates two electrons to the first complex. As the electrons are passed to the next complex, two hydrogen ions hitch a ride from the matrix to the intermembrane space. The electrons then move through the complex and take up position on the matrix side of the membrane. As they are passed to the next complex, a second pair of hydrogen ions are picked up from the matrix. This complex, called coenzyme Q, actually glides up through the membrane and dumps the hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. The electrons then move to the final complex and wend their way back to the matrix side of the membrane. At the end of the chain, two more hydrogen ions are moved across the membrane to the intermembrane space. Finally, an oxygen atom slides in and picks up the two electrons from the chain. And two hydrogen ions from the matrix to produce water. To encapsulate, each NADH molecule releases two electrons, which moving through the chain, pump six hydrogen ions from the matrix. The primary role of oxygen in cellular respiration is to siphon off electrons from the end of the chain. Now let's consider the other energy carrier from the Krebs cycle, FADH2. FADH2 enters the electron transport chain at coenzyme Q. Two electrons are transported down the chain and thus only four hydrogen ions are moved into the intermembrane space. At the end of the chain, oxygen again picks up the two electrons. So far, the energy from NADH and FADH2 has been used to pump hydrogen ions from the matrix to the intermembrane space. As a result, the concentration of hydrogen ions is higher in the intermembrane space than the matrix. This creates two types of gradients across the membrane. A concentration gradient of hydrogen ions and an electrostatic gradient. These gradients hold potential energy 
that will be used to synthesize ATP. Evidence suggests that the potential energy across the membrane is utilized when pairs of hydrogen ions move through special channels in the membrane. In so doing, each pair activates an enzyme on the matrix side of the channel. Finally, this enzyme catalyzes the reaction of ADP with a phosphate group to synthesize ATP. Let's review the synthesis of ATP from NADH and FADH2. Each NADH moves three pairs of hydrogen ions to the intermembrane space, which upon returning to the matrix, produce three molecules of ATP. Now, each FADH2 molecule moves two pairs of hydrogen ions across the membrane, producing two molecules of ATP. That accounts for the energy carriers produced from the Krebs cycle, and not a bad payoff. But there is another energy payload to be had from the NADH produced in the cytosol by glycolysis. While the molecules themselves cannot cross the mitochondrial membranes, they manage to relay their electrons to the chain through highly specialized shuttles. The electrons in this instance enter further down the chain at coenzyme Q and pump four hydrogen ions across the membrane. Thus, each NADH from glycolysis results in the formation of two additional molecules of ATP. Now let's bring everything together to get a picture of the total ATP output from a single molecule of glucose. Glycolysis generated two ATPs and two NADH molecules, which upon reaching the electron transport chain produced four more ATP molecules. Oxidative decarboxylation and the Krebs cycle produced two ATP molecules, eight NADH molecules, and two FADH2 molecules. The eight NADH molecules become 24 ATPs. And the two FADH2 molecules render an additional four ATP molecules. Adding it all up, cellular respiration produces 36 ATP molecules from one glucose molecule. Yet these 36 ATPs represent only a portion of the energy available from glucose. In review, cellular respiration takes the energy of glucose through glycolysis, moves it around the Krebs cycle, and down the electron transport chain. While cellular respiration seems diverse, as we shall see, an organism's diversity is a virtue in periods of stress.